Coming up on Rob on the Road, a decade of destinations, the best of 10 seasons of Rob on the Road. This time, it's amazing architecture, and Northern California has some of the most marvelous and stunning structures in the Golden State. Let's discover the dazzling details inside the restored and modernized Sacramento Valley train station. Plus, a private tour inside Gladding McBean in Lincoln, where famous facades are created and shipped around the globe. We'll open the doors to days gone by and the origins of Gladding McBean dating back to the 1800s. And later, the reconstruction of one of the oldest structures in North America is in Vina, California. A trip to the Abbey of New Clairvaux. And to the top of this architectural gem, the California State Capitol. We'll climb to the very top. And now, Rob on the Road, exploring Northern California. Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart. We are celebrating the best of 10 seasons on Rob on the Road, a decade of destinations. We begin with the Sacramento Valley train station. Get ready to go below above and throughout this architectural beauty, one of the most iconic buildings in Sacramento. Welcome to Sacramento Valley Station, built in the roaring 20s and thriving today after a $36 million renovation, opening up the rails to the future in Sacramento. Right now, Greg Taylor, the head architect for this project, is joining us. Good to see you, Greg. Nice to meet you, Rob. Nice to see you, too. This is beautiful. You pulled it off. Can't wait to show you. All right, let's go inside. It's busy here today. Yes, as usual. The roots of the Sacramento Valley Station stretch back to February 1926. That's when Southern Pacific Railroad first opened these doors to Northern California and the nation. At the time, this building was state-of-the-art and an architectural gem. Its brick facade, terracotta adornments, and soaring lobby all celebrated Sacramento's historical importance as the terminus of the first transcontinental railroad and its prominence as the gateway to America's richest agricultural region. For decades, the station and the railroad thrived. The nearby rail yards employed thousands, but the advent of the automobile and the airplane began the slow decline of the passenger rail system. Now, 90 years later, rail travel is coming back. As part of a new statewide rail plan, the city of Sacramento took over this 32-acre site in 2007 and with a mix of federal and local dollars, began a decades-long process of reinvestment and rehabilitation of this entire area. Plans call for hundreds of new homes and businesses in the old rail yards and a major new transportation hub for high-speed trains, Amtrak, light rail, and streetcars. But the centerpiece? is this modernized 68,000 square foot station. This is gorgeous. Isn't it magnificent? Welcome to Sacramento. Welcome to Sacramento. That's, that's our message for all of our travelers coming in from all over the state. And the country, and who knows where. This right. main lobby is so historic. It is. It tells a story from Sacramento's past. Um, from its beginning to its future, like you said, we've made it mechanically uh, 21st century and moving forward and very sustainable for a, a place that normally would be drenched in heat and, and sweating in here, quite frankly. There was um, no air conditioning no air before conditioning. the renovation. <laughs> no. Now, warm air in the lobby flows upward through open rosettes in the ceiling, where it's cooled and returned to a temperature-controlled floor. Here in the attic, and even in the basement, there's extensive seismic retrofitting done to bring the station up to the most modern earthquake standards. Concrete beams and dozens of steel anchors drilled into the brick walls. From the attic, we travel down to the rarely seen third floor to discover a nearly completed new event space and an incredible rooftop balcony. We see the city growing around us. Yeah, it's fabulous. It's the 
it's a piece that we knew that was going to have relevance for the city. This site actually becomes the center of the whole inner region, looking from West Sacramento to the downtown Midtown around it. We really are recentered on what was the edge of town prior when it was just the rail yards. That was part of your goal from the beginning of the renovation was from your perspective to reestablish the center of the city, the heart of the city. Right, right. We have the capacity out here right now to bring high-speed rail in and to move hundreds and, and thousands of people a day. And when the station opened, there was 4,500 people that came through the station a day in 1926. And still and that, today, it is in the top 10 is most the, busy is the Amtrak seventh, stations in the country. Seventh busiest in the Amtrak network, yes. Is the roof from Gladding McBean? Originally, yes, all the terracotta is Gladney McBean. In fact, we had to replace some of the balusters here during the seismic project, and we had the original castings were still at Gladney McBean. And the restoration from the soot that was kind of baked in and the work we had to do to restore these from, from you know, over 70 years of when we had steam engines out here and we're, we're kind of coating all the terracotta, we had, a, we had a real hard time getting it off, but we did succeed in bringing it back to its original luster. We've saved the best for last, the magnificent lobby. The original Southern Pacific wooden benches are still here, but years of more recent remodeling have been stripped away to reveal the original soaring ceilings and chandeliers. Everything painstakingly cleaned and return to its original luster and beauty. But the walls here are just beautiful. In, in my opinion, they're pristine. I think you did a fantastic job on the remodel. Oh, well, thank you. I think we, we had an incredible team. We had artisans from uh, the East Coast. We had local folks here that were hired to clean the, the, the ceiling and work with those uh, specialists. Um, we had contractors, masons. Did you think it would turn out this beautiful? I, I'd still get chills when I walk in. You do? The, yes. The whole team celebrates. This is a project of a lifetime for everybody in the city that was involved in this, the workers. Um, it is truly a magical project and one, one to celebrate. The mural restored to its original beauty. Yes. And it is stunning. Tell me about it. So this is a mural that beautifully depicts an event that didn't actually happen. Right. <laughs> there was, an, there was a, a groundbreaking for the railroad at, at 2nd and K Street, but it was not to the level of pomp and circumstance that this mural shows. It was much more practical, throw a few shovels and get, it, get going. The muralist was John McQuarrie, and he did a lot of murals for the Southern Pacific. And this mural is actually two full lengths of canvas that were painted in a studio and brought here and seamed. There's a horizontal seam across the whole piece that was put in place. There's minor touch up to the paint, very, very little. It's mostly a cleaning process. And again, just taking those layers of soot and nicotine away to restore what I build at the time as our Sistine Chapel. The mural portrays Leland Stanford, Mark Hopkins, Collis Huntington, and Charles Crocker, the men who started the Central Pacific Railroad out of Sacramento. Here too, homage to the Chinese and Irish workers whose hands actually built the unbroken ribbon of steel that changed America forever. It all leads us back to today and for Northern California, an exciting tomorrow. As I sit here talking to you, I'm counting up in my head. You've been involved with this for almost three decades. Thanks, Rob. That's, <laughs> that's a lot of time, but a lot of love. It's Labors been, of love. It's been a great experience. Thank you, Greg Taylor, lead architect here. Did you know Gladding McBean in Lincoln is one of only two terracotta clay architectural factories in America? We've got a private pass inside the long closed museum. Today, we're opening the fireproof doors for you to see some of the first pieces ever made by this famous factory. This portion is off the beaten path, but we have to show it because look. Right. They're impressive. Obviously, these kilns are not operational. You think? <laughs> <laughs> but look at them. They're just stunning. 
I mean, you really see history alive here. And as I love to do on this show, I mean, this is a place where you can literally put your hands right. on history. On history. And look at this kiln. These are covered in grass and moss. Right. Tell me more about what would have happened here in the day. Well, and it, like we see up front, only instead of people, you had mules with carts behind them to pull the pipe in to get them loaded. So yes, mules were used here. Fascinating. What do you think when you are in such a historic oh, space? Well, I love coming to work every day. That does excite me. I love coming to this place. We, we actually work in a museum. You're moved by the history of it all and you're actually contributing to keeping that history alive. So where are we now? And you've had us to take off our hats. Yeah, we were able, we were able to take off our safety equipment because we're in a non-manufacturing part of the facility and we're getting ready to go into the museum. And this is all closed to the public. It is all closed to the public, which is why uh, it's such a, a great treat to be able to see it today. This is our fire door. Uh, if you could open it, it's very heavy. And the way it worked back in the day was there was a piece of burlap rope that held it closed. And if there was a fire, the burlap rope would burn and release this cable that would close the door and prevent the fire from going any further. And it worked. And it worked because this building has survived two fires. Jamie, look at all of these terracotta pieces. A lot of history here, Mr. Fred Anderson, uh, who purchased the company in 1976, wanted this area preserved, um, and we, we intend on doing that. And not only preserved, but as we're going to see, portions are untouched. That's right. They remain the same. They remain the same as they were. One of our most famous sculptors, and it's Ernie Cadell. Really? Um, he started in the early 1900s. Uh, this picture was taken, I believe, in uh, 1955. And he's standing in front of the Procter & Gamble symbol, oh, which, yeah. which he sculpted. Very famous prototypes, yes. I guess, if you will, came out of here. This is Brooks Brothers. I recognize the logo. Right, Brooks Brothers clothing. We didn't design this piece, um, but this piece was made per the architect's design love their logo. These are so beautiful. Native signs of the Golden West, San Francisco. And these are pretty special. These are actually the original plaster models for terracotta pieces that were made for the Native Sons of the Golden West building in San Francisco. And look at these stunning plaster models on this side, this one, Bank of America. Right, and the terracotta piece that was made from this model is in Southern California. This is fascinating. And this is the seal of the city of New York. Um, it's a plaster model for a job, a restoration job that we did on a city owned building in New York. This is absolutely beautiful, Jamie. It's very detailed. I mean, you see the Indian uh, in the pilgrim on the side, uh, the eagle, um, the lettering, and, and even the, the braid on the design. It's very detailed. This is the old modeling room through this door, and it's where the, the modelers worked, where the sculptors uh, honed their craft. Jamie, look at this. This is where the sculpting was done, and if the pieces need to be laid up to fit together, these giant easels were used for that purpose. This is so old and authentic. And these easels are still operational. We still utilize them when we're producing big ornamental facades to fit them together. Fascinating. This is unmistakable. Look at this. This is from the RCA Victrola, his master's voice. This is old. This is old. And story has it that this is the first prototype for the ad campaign for the RCA Victrola. My goodness. And it's a plaster model. And we think that this plaster model was used uh, to photograph and present to the architect or the designer for their final approval. 
When the sculptors and artists had downtime, they would practice their skill by creating some of these, and you can see what great detail goes into them. And this piece right here shows yeah. where they practiced, because look at the thumbprints and the tool prints all around the top. And that's beautiful in and of itself. Yes, it is. Surrounded by works of art that you could see in anywhere around the world. Around the world. I'm very excited to be a part of history and in helping to preserve these wonderful buildings across the United States. We don't see the terracotta from the street, but I know it's up there. Without it, the cities wouldn't be the same because they do create an ambiance within the cities. Oh, I love that. The cities would not be the same. They wouldn't. And it all came from the city of Lincoln. Yes, the restoration of these beautiful buildings from the city of Lincoln. We are celebrating the best of 10 seasons. Go with me atop the California State Capitol Dome, closed to the public for more than 50 years. But first, did you know Vina, California is home to a sacred destination, which is one of the oldest structures in North America? We're now on a journey back in time to see the sacred stones and medieval majesty of the Abbey of New Clairvaux. Here are the medieval stones. Yes, this is it. They're up. They are up. And it all worked. It all worked, believe me. It, it, was, it was no small feat no small engineering feat to make this possible. Well, we watched part of it going up, you know, on the, on the mock structures uh -huh. years uh -huh. ago, but look. Yes, yes. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, as, as simple as this little space is, just the proportions of it, the, the lighting of it, the coloring of the stone, plus, you know, the story it, it, it contains, you know, it's almost too much. And that's why, you know, you get these lovely vaulted uh, arches, rib vaulting, that kind of soar into eternity. And they take me and my spirit there as well. And I think any visitor will feel that and, and, and in be engaged with that, you know, and, and move into something. I think that, that California is filled with places where you can get away and silence your heart, this being one of them. Mm -hmm. I wonder if people realize when they walk in here what they're standing inside of. You know, I've often wondered that myself. I think many of them do. Um, some of them may not know all the, the facts, but I am convinced that the space speaks so eloquently you know, that they do have, maybe on a subconscious level, uh, they're engaged with something, something bigger than themselves, something about truth, about love, about eternity. You know, and I've seen it. I've been here many times, and people, visitors, come walking through and round the corner, and their mouths just drop open, and they just gasp. To have it here in California is incredible. And you know, yeah. this is from Ovila, Spain. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. It's it, when I, you know, walked around the corner and I was able to to come inside. I was just like, wow, right back in Spain. Journeys in life mm -hmm. take all different routes. Yes. So did these stones. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and and none of it, you know, particularly planned at least on a human level. But you know, what we speak about is, is the providence of, of, of God um, and how all things really work for the good, mm -hmm. you know, so that even dead ends or detours, or at least what we would perceive as these kinds of blocks or obstacles are an actual way, in, in actual fact, ways forward. Um, into this, uh, continuing this journey of life. I did not realize when I asked 
you and the monks to sing for us that you've hardly ever sung in there. No, we haven't. It's, I think this is only the second time uh, since, you know, the completion of the, the stonework. What do you think? I love it. I mean, the, the, the sound, the reverberation, it's just incredible. The acoustics. The acoustics are, are out of this world. And those acoustics are 800 years old. Yes. And they, they were hearing the chants of the monks for a good 600 years. And they're going to hear these stones, not living, but still somehow I like to think these stones are going to hear their monks once again after a 200 year period of, of nothing. Why should people come here? Why should they take a trip on 99 and come here? To experience the profound love and peace of God in their lives. That's already right there in their hearts. But this place just simply allows that to come forth more in the consciousness and, and, and just really engage a person, I really think. You could not have created a more beautiful place for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your encouragement, Rob. We've made it up to the second floor of the California State Capitol. We are headed over to the elevators where we're going to go to the fourth floor and then a special entrance. No roof access, but not the case today. This is so exciting. Fifth floor. Sixth floor. Oh my gosh. Just look at that view of Capitol Mall, the perfect spot to see this. We are on the first level of the colonnade. Just look at these beautiful columns. They are so massive up close and so historic. And I love it when you can just reach out and put your hands on history. I love that kind of thing. Speaking of history, we have a capital expert and historian, Vito Scromo, with the Department of General Services here at the Capitol. Good to see you. Good to see you again, Rob. Yes. Great, thank you. Great to be with you. So exciting to be up here, which is close to the public, but yes. you're taking us on an exclusive tour today. Yes, exactly. And it's a combination of the architecture, the wonderful grounds, and then the views here really make it a spectacular visit, and I hope you enjoy it. This has been closed since World War II. Because of safety concerns and not meeting codes for access, so it's not open to the public, but it has wonderful historical lessons and architectural lessons. So as we walk up there, you'll see. Okay, let's go through this sure. door because what's on the other side will blow you away. My goodness, look at this. Vito, this is the dome. This is the inner dome, and we have a two do dome system. This building, heavily remodeled in 1975 that took until 1982 to complete at the time it was the largest restoration of any building in north america and it's been the second largest attraction in the state for visitors my goodness where are we going now we're going to go to the second level of the colonnade look at this and what i find fascinating here is sacramento was called the city of the trees if you look the panoramic view from here shows you how many trees we have, and you pick the best time of year to be here because it's like a carpet of color. Oh, yeah. So you have a spectacular view of Sacramento, the Sierra Mountains, and the surrounding area from here. All right, I can't believe we're doing this. This is the staircase to the top of the building. Are we up to code? We are not up to code, but it is definitely okay. safe. You notice, too, Rob, as we're walking, it moves a little bit. I feel that. You see the rods? Yes, I don't point that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's designed to be flexible. In case of an earthquake, those rods will cause this to move without falling. So this is actually one of the safest places in the building. We're almost at the top, but I want you to see one section of the fencing that's been taken out. Okay. And it gives you a spectacular but scary view of what the uh. distances are between the upper and uh, lower dome. We're looking 90 mm -hmm. feet down. So before the fencing was here, this is what workers had to deal with. Whoa, Vito, that is scary. It is. 
How high up in the air? Are 90 we? feet. And from the ground? From the ground, we're close to 237 feet. And when we get to the top part of the building, which we're going to get now called the cupola, <gasps> we'll be 237 feet above ground level. So first of all, the architecture, what you'll see here is 19th and 20th century. You'll see the top of this space that has hooks. They used to hang gasoline lanterns. There. No way. The lanterns were hung there for lighting. So when the restoration occurred, they added these lights. And these bars you see here are for seismic safety, but you don't see them when you're down on ground level. No, I've never noticed them. You never notice them. And then if you look around, you have, I think, the pinnacle of all the themes we talked about. And it really takes me back to be up here. Yeah, you know, people ask me all the time, what do you, what emotions do you have when you come up here? And what I think about hits me is the 165 years of history that I'm standing on. I mean, you talk about all the major legislation, events, people that visited this building. I mean, it is a huge treasure. I mean, we have really explored the Capitol in a way that I've never seen before. Right, and most unfortunately the public can't see, but through your show they can. Vito, thank you. It's a pleasure, Rob. What a pleasure and a treasure here thank in you very California. Much. On top of the state capitol, can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs>Thank you for joining us on Rob on the Road, a decade of destinations as we celebrate the best of 10 seasons. Thank you so much for your support.